it's that time of year again where your favourite GTA billionaire gives you the rundown on the best ways to make your fortune in GTA Online. I've smashed through well over $2 billion without really even trying, and after this I hope you guys will too. I've made comprehensive separate money guides for many of the businesses and heists I will talk about in this video, so if you want to know every little detail then please check those out, there will be links in the description below. This is GTA Billionaire's Ultimate Money Guide for 2023. So without further ado, let's get to it. If you're a new player where your funds will be limited, one of the best things you can buy early on is the MC Clubhouse. These start at just $200,000, but you really want to splash out a bit more and get one in the city. The main reason you want to do this is because of one particular contract called Life and Death Bikes. This one mission will pay up to $120,000 when they are double money, depending on how fast you complete it. It shouldn't really take more than 6 minutes and is pretty easy to do. Be sure to have purchased the custom bike shop for $530,000, which means you get the option to return the bike and get the maximum payout. You get it done? Wish I could have rolled with you on this one. <laughs> don't do nothing stupid with that bike though, alright? If you bring it back to the clubhouse, I don't doubt you'll be able to get a little something for that. Could be nice money for you. How about that? Once you have completed the job, you can simply load back into your clubhouse in a new lobby and start the mission all over again, meaning there is zero cooldown. This will earn you around $1 million every hour, a fantastic return on such a small investment. Even when these default back to $60,000, you'll still make your money back within the hour. There are other contracts you can complete, but none pay out as much as this, nor will they be completed as quickly. You will also be able to modify a bike now and again and deliver it to the customer if you purchase the custom bike shop. These can pay out up to $90,000 on double money, minus expenses, for literally a few minutes of easy labour. The Auto Shop is one of my favourite recent additions to online. The Auto Shop allows you to modify cars that come into your workshop and pass them on for a nice profit. These can pay as much as $50,000 per car, and if you bought two car lifts for $650,000, you can do two at a time. These are very quick and easy to do. Delivering two high paying cars back to back took me just three minutes and netted me a total of $225,000 minus the mod costs when these were on a double money event week. A little while later you'll get a message from Sasanta telling you that you have another car to mod. But if you thought that was good, just wait until you hear this. When on the delivery menu and hovering over deliver, quickly press the confirm button then up on your d-pad and then the confirm button again and if you've done it correctly, you'll get this message in the top left corner. Meaning you'll not only get paid for delivering the vehicle yourself, but you'll also get paid for your staff delivering the same vehicle. Therefore almost doubling the money you're making. So with the two cars I just sold, I would have made almost $450,000 in just 3 minutes. However, doing this little glitch is not very consistent and you'll often get stuck in this black screen so do this at your own risk. But the best thing about the auto shop is the contracts. These are nice little mini heists you can do in order to make more money. There are a total of 8 mini heists paying up between $170,000 to $300,000, but these can quite often be a part of the double money event weeks, meaning the host can bank up to $675,000 for the union depository contract. On an average playthrough, this should be completed in under 20 minutes. The next best mini heist is the bank contract. 
The reason being is that you can skip the second prep completely by starting it and then entering a new lobby, as turning on the signal jammers really doesn't make much difference to the finale. The bank contract normally pays out $178,000, but would be $356,000 when double money. I have completed this one solo in just 14 minutes, but the more players you have for these heists, the more money you will all eventually take, just as long as nobody dies, so it's usually beneficial to invite some randoms if you need to. There is an easy way to always get the contract you want if it's not available from the board. Simply start up any of the heists, then leave the auto shop. Call up the Santa and then cancel the contract. Hey y'all, need something? This will then change the jobs on the board. Simply rinse and repeat until you get the job you want. The auto shop starts at $1.6 million or just over a million when discounted. But the best one, in my opinion, is in Burton, especially for the Union Depository contract and this starts at $1.83 million. There are two great ways to make money from the agency. One of them is through doing the security contracts. Not only do these pay out decent money, ranging from $31 to $70,000, but when you've eventually completed 200 of them, it will mean maxing out your passive income, which will be stored in your safe. This tops out at $250,000, with $20,000 added every one in-game day. The two best contracts you want to do, if they are available, are Vehicle Recovery and Recover Valuables, as these are the fastest and easiest ones to complete, meaning that you will reach your 200 target much quicker. These can also be on double money, meaning well over $100,000 in just a few minutes. Once you have completed just three security contracts, you will unlock the ability to start payphone hits. These are very easy to complete and shouldn't take more than a few minutes, each paying out $85,000 if you complete them in a specific way. There used to be a way to avoid the 20 minute cooldown on these, but this has since been patched. You also have access to the Dr. Dre missions. You took something that belongs to me. Bitch! <gasps> ass! <gasps> Motherfucker! <sighs> and the Franklin and Lamar missions. If your mama come in, I'ma fuck around and touch you. But with regards to payout for time invested, these aren't really worth it. An agency starts at just over $2 million, but the best location to buy is Howick, costing upwards of $2.83 million. When the Keo Perico first came out, it was easily the best way to make money for the time invested, with the whole thing completed from start to finish in about 40 minutes for your average player. But since Rockstar introduced a 48 minute cooldown rather than the 10 minutes it was previously, it's now just a bit odd. The way it now works is you have to wait 48 minutes after the completion of the heist in order to start a new one, if you have completed the finale with other players. If you completed the finale solo, you'd have to wait 2 hours and 24 minutes. After that time, you would have a window of a further 48 minutes to activate it on hard mode. This meant that you would need to be very time conscious, and this isn't always possible for most players. If you were unable to start the heist in that allotted window, then the game would default to normal mode. The likelihood of the primary targets also changed significantly, with Cincinnato Tequila being a ridiculously high 60% if started within the next 72 hours of real life time. Any time after that, then you would not get Tequila at all. The timings also affect how the secondary targets pay out, with up to 20% increase if activated within those 72 hours. This means that each stack of gold would pay around $550,000 and each painting would be about $240,000. You won't, however, get any secondary loot bonus if you have the pink diamond as a primary target. 
as primary targets go, they pay out anything from $900,000 to $1.43 million. And the very rare Panther statue, which Rockstar seem to only release about once or twice a year, pays out between $1.9 million to just over $2 million. As a worst case scenario, where you'd get Sinsamito Tequila on normal mode and no secondary loot bonus, as a solo player, you're still looking at around $1.2 million with the bonus of completing the Elite Challenge. Because the Keo Perico system is now so convoluted and difficult to understand, it's put a lot of people off doing it, myself included, but it's still one of the best ways to make money. Keo Perico has always been better to do as a two player, and now with the giant cooldown, if you do it solo, it's now even more so. To be able to start a K Perico heist, you first need to visit Mini Madrazo at the casino's nightclub, then get yourself a Kasatka with a starting price of $2.2 million. I kind of glossed over the arcade and casino heist in last year's guide, but these have since made a resurgence after the cooldown nerf on the K Perico heist. Doing a casino heist preps is doable as a solo player, but you'll need an extra player for the finale. On a normal playthrough, your average player should have the relevant preps completed in about 40 minutes. The easiest preps and finale to complete are the big con approach with the group sex disguise. Next security check's coming up. You can do this. You can keep your cool. Don't be nervous. Howdy. You looking for the vault? And silent and sneaky. Okay, here we are at last. The lower level. Naturally, it's heavily guarded. Woo. Open ah. sesame. Ah. Only one way down from here. One step at a time. To with a half decent two player team, you should be able to complete these without any issue. The aggressive approach is the most fun, but the preps are much harder and you need to do more of them in order to make your life easier in the finale. If you opt for the big con approach, you will only need to complete the seven mandatory preps and then the level two keycard. You can simply buy the keycard at a cost of $70,000 if you want to save a bit of time. To maximize your profit, you want to select the 5% cut gunman Carl Abalaji and choose the micro SMG loadout. You want a 5% cut Kareem Dens for the getaway vehicles and only ever choose the Sentinel Classics. Hacker will depend on how fast you are, how many people and what the vault target is, with artwork being the quickest to grab. Generally, choosing either Page or AV will be fine for all targets, but this will depend on how many people do the finale. Then make sure to choose the group sex entry disguise where you will need to complete the two additional preps and then the vault drills and vault key cards. These are the only preps you need to do. Do not do the patrol routes, dug in shipments or bother with the power drills unless you have a lot of time and a team of four. If you collected the 54 playing cards from around the map, you'll have access to the high roller disguise, meaning you never have to do any additional prep for the exit disguise. If you are going to do the silent and sneaky approach, you'll also need the same gunman, getaway driver and hacker as Big Con, as well as the vault key cards. The other mandatory preps are drone parts and the vault lasers. As before, do not bother with the patrol routes, dug in shipments or the EMP or special outfits. None of these will be of benefit to you to complete the heist and will only cost you time. You will always want to play these on hard mode as the payout for completing the Elite Challenge is $100,000 compared to just $50,000 on normal mode, as well as the added bonus for doing this on hard mode anyway. We can go this way again, but it's still a bit too soon. Security is going to be tighter and overall could be tricky. But hey, pay may also be better. It's your call. I'd say go for it if you have a solid heist crew behind you. Sneaking around just feels... Naughty. And make sure to select a high buyer from the finale setup menu. As for vault contents, there are four possibilities. Cash, which pays out a total of just over 2.1 million. Artwork, which pays out 2.35 million. Gold pays out just under 2.6 million. And diamonds paying out just over 3.6 million. Diamonds are very rare and will only come out maybe twice a year and usually for only a week. So generally you want gold. There is a very easy way to change the vault contents target if you get something you don't want. After scoping the vault, back out and call Lester, then cancel the heist. Why hello, how you doing? How can I help? Lester will then give you this dialogue. So, all that prep work for nothing? Okay, you're the boss. I'll get someone in to uh, 
dispose of everything, and you can start again when you're ready. Head back to the arcade and access your planning board. You'll now likely get a different target with your heist still active. If it's still not what you want, then simply cancel the heist again and start over. When playing the silent and sneaky approach, it's much easier to grab some extra cash from the mini vault on the way in. You like that? The EMP is all set and ready to go. And on the way out. This isn't as easy when using the big con approach, so silent and sneaky tends to pay out a little bit more. The best way is as a two player, where you can decide how you want to split the money up. If you need me, I'll be sitting here with my hands down my pants. But you're looking at a total of around 2.8 million for maybe an hour's labour. Myself and Blue Bear hold the console's speedrun world record for Silent and Sneaky in under 40 minutes, and we totaled just over 2.5 million by grabbing all artwork but no extra money from the mini vault. If you're both good enough, it is possible to grab all of the gold just as a two-player and still stay undetected. Once you have completed a heist and start up a new one, simply keep switching between Big Con and Silent and Sneaky, as these will now always be the ones on hard mode, while the one you had just completed will be locked. There is still a 48 minute cooldown before starting the heist again, but these are a very good option for making great cash, and the money you will take is much more consistent than the K Perico heist. Another financial benefit of having an arcade is the regular passive income. Simply filling your arcade with the cheapest machines will ensure you fill your safe with $5,000 every 48 in-game minutes. This isn't a great deal, but it's basically free money you can go and collect when your safe is maxed out to its $100,000, but this is only after an initial payout to buy the machines. If you're not bothered by what arcade machines you have, then just get as many free or cheapest machines as possible. There are only two locations of arcade you want to consider, and they are Video Geddon in La Mesa or 8-Bit in Vinewood, starting at 1.87 million. Depending on what other upgrades you purchase depends on how much you'll end up spending, but do get the personal quarters for $150,000 as this will mean you will be able to spawn inside your arcade. The arcade can be purchased from the Maze Bank foreclosure website. This next one won't be for everyone as it requires beating the hardest heist finale in the game, the Doomsday Scenario Act 3. I'm also not the kind of person to promote these kind of glitches, but there is a way to skip all of the setups and get straight into the finale. Getting good at this heist means as a 2 player we can get this done in under 18 minutes, meaning a total payout of almost $2 million after adding on the $100,000 for the Elite Challenge. It's worth remembering that the Doomsday and Apartment Heist finales all got a payout buff midway through 2022. The prep skip will cost a total of $749,000, leaving you with a total of just over $1.2 million. I won't be showing you how to do the prep skip in this video, but there are some easy guides elsewhere on YouTube. I do the Act 3 quite regularly, but not for the money aspect, because I don't need to, because I'm a billionaire, but it's just one of my favourite heists to complete. In order to do the Doomsday Heist, you will need to have purchased a facility. They start at 1.25 million, but the best overall location for all the Doomsday Heists is the Grand Sonora Desert location, with the fastest location for just Act 3 in Sandy Shores. Whatever you do, just don't buy the Land Act Reservoir facility. Despite being around since 2015, the Criminal Mastermind Challenge is still one of the most fun and best ways to make money in GTA Online. The Criminal Mastermind Challenge is completing all five of the apartment heists in order with the same team throughout and without dying. Completing this will bag you a bonus of $10 million each. 
there's also a loyalty bonus of $1 million and the all in order bonus of $1 million. So you could potentially get $12 million each in bonuses. If the host pays the other three players a fair 20% for each finale, meaning the host taking 40% throughout the entire run with the exception of the fleecer job as it's a two player heist, all four players could make around $14 million each. On a normal playthrough, for most people, it should take around six and a half hours. When doing the criminal mastermind, just make sure each player buys the heavy utility vest and have it saved as an outfit. This will give you around twice as much body armor protection and after all, your main objective is to stay alive. The Gun Running DLC released way back in 2017 and with it came the Bunker Weapon Sales. There are 11 bunkers to choose from, starting at just over $1.1 million. But the best one in my opinion is Farmhouse, so if you can afford it, get this one. You then want to buy the upgrades, which produce better quality product faster. I also advise buying a security upgrade as it allows you to go AFK on your cameras, but it's not entirely necessary if you can't afford it just yet. Buying a farmhouse bunker with all upgrades will cost you just over 4.7 million. The best way to run your bunker efficiently is by always purchasing the supplies for $75,000. After approximately 10 minutes, full supplies will be delivered, saving you approximately 30 minutes stealing them yourself. After 2 hours and 20 minutes of being online, you'll have produced one batch of product that you can now sell. The benefit of this is how you will only ever get one vehicle, perfect for selling solo. This one batch will sell for $210,000 or up to $315,000 if sold in a full public lobby. This equates to $240,000 of profit. Before selling, make sure to buy more supplies than always register as a CEO. So you can activate Ghost Organization, which hides your player and stock from the map for 3 minutes. Now and again, bunker sales will be on double money event weeks, meaning a solo sale in a full public lobby could net you as much as $630,000 for one simple selling mission. A full bunker will need more players to help sell, but that could be as much as over $3 million and take 11 hours and 40 minutes of being online to fill up. If you didn't want the hassle of selling in a public lobby, you can now sell in an invite only or friend lobbies, but you are missing out on a big fat bonus. There has also been a new addition since last year when you can make a quick $50,000 every 48 minutes. These come in the style of dune loader trucks where you just have to drive to an ammunition store, sometimes being chased by some enemies. These should only take a few minutes to complete. Only do these in solo lobbies as there is no public lobby bonus. Oh jeez, fuck. A major blessing from the Criminal Enterprises DLC is how you can now get staff to source crates for you at a cost of $7,500 each. Yep. The only drawback is how the amount of crates they deliver is random, so they could get you one, two or three crates for each sourcing mission. And there is a 48 minute cooldown between sourcing this way. This is still the best way to stop your crate warehouse as it leaves you free to do other things. However, if you do decide to source some crates yourself, you will occasionally get a call from your assistant asking you to do a quick delivery to the docks, which pays out a further $50,000. It also increases the chances of you being asked to pick up a special item. You wanna go for it? Come back to the office soon to make the deal. Which could sell for a handsome sum just for one delivery. You can own up to five warehouses and I advise getting five large warehouses. A full warehouse could sell for as much as $3.33 million in a full public lobby. This means when double money event weeks on crates come around, you're looking at up to $6.66 million per warehouse. So it's really in your best interest to hold on to this until these event weeks, as selling five will net you $33.3 million. Before you can buy a warehouse, you will need to get yourself a CEO office and they start at $1 million, with large warehouses starting at $1.9 million. 
I recently made a comprehensive CEO crates guide which covers absolutely everything in much more detail, so I highly advise checking that one out. Link will be in the description. Nightclubs start at just over a million, but as usual, you'll need to buy the upgrades to maximize your profit. All of this will cost you at least $2.25 million. On top of that, if you really want to maximize your income, you'll need to own a special cargo warehouse or hangar, a bunker, coke lockup, counterfeit cash warehouse, and a meth lab. You don't need to have these businesses maxed out with upgrades or up and running. You just need to have them owned to make money from the nightclub. So if you can't quite afford it, then just buy the base models. You can have up to five technicians, so you want to set them to the highest earning produce, which is cargo and shipments, sporting goods, South American imports, pharmaceutical research, and cash creation. The best time to sell is when your South American imports has 10 out of 10 crates which will be completed after 20 in-game hours and will sell for around $1 million in a solo lobby, but could be as much as over $1.5 million in a full public lobby with the 50% bonus. There is now a way to speed up the nightclub production, and that's through either completing the business battles it's been a minute. or by calling up Johan and requesting to collect some extra crates. Hey boss, what can I do for you? Cool, totally. Let me see what we have. The other side of the nightclub won't cost you nearly as much to set up as you don't need to own any other businesses and that is the nightclub's popularity. Keeping your popularity at its maximum will net you $50,000 every 48 minutes. The best way to keep your popularity high is by either kicking out a troublemaker or by driving a VIP home or to the hospital. These little side missions will not only increase your popularity, but will each pay out a minimum of at least $10,000 each time. If you do not have these missions available, you can pay the $10,000 to switch DJs, which will slowly increase your popularity. Doing the standard popularity missions sucks. With the Los Santos Drug Wars DLC came a giant buff to the previously dead and dreadful air freight business in the hangar. This now pays out three times as much as it used to, meaning every crate delivered is worth $30,000 when it was previously just 10. On top of that, you can also get a 70% bonus if you fill your warehouse with 50 of one particular type of product, which could be narcotics, chemicals, or medical supplies. Selling a full warehouse can now earn you over $3.9 million if sold in a full public lobby, as you will receive the high demand bonus. Not particularly solo friendly, and you're better off taking turns sourcing with a friend, but it's yet another great way to make money. At the end of December 2022 through to January, these went on double money, which meant they were an incredible six times better than they previously were. A full warehouse of narcotics would sell in a full public lobby for $7.9 million. It would take around 5 hours for both players to fill their warehouses. The best hangar location is Hangar 3497 in Fort Sancudo, as it starts at only just over $2 million and would grant you permanent access to the base without receiving a wanted level and closer to most source emissions. Source emissions can be challenging without the right vehicles available but they are different to anything else and generally quite fun. There was also a brand new business added with the Los Santos Drug Wars DLC, and that was the Acid Lab. In order to get going with this, you first need to complete six first dose missions, and then retrieve the last bit of gear to set you up. to pull the trigger on that acid lab? Do not start running this business until you have then completed 10 jobs from DAX. No! This will then unlock the ability to upgrade your lab. Changer, dude. Wanna go in there and check it out? Always buy the supplies for a measly $60,000, where spending just $96,000 on supplies could return you over half a million if sold in a full public lobby. 
When these were on double money, just a week after coming out, these would make you over a million dollars each time you sold, which was every three to four hours, which was a fantastic return. Selling missions are pretty straightforward. Just make sure you register as a CEO so you can go ghost. Selling missions are also dependent on where you park your lab. I worked out that parking it right here means you'll get the better police ambush mission way more often. When selling, shooting at a police vehicle outside or nearby will trigger the next part of the mission. Where you will then need to go to the backup drop-off location. Just make sure you call and request a job before selling. This is Simeon. What's up? So you can accept it, back out and lose the cops immediately. Setting up the lab will cost you $750,000, but you will earn more than that back before you've even spent a penny by doing the previous missions, which could pay out over a million dollars in total. Don't forget to double the production speed every 24 hours, meaning your lab will be fully stocked to sell in just 3 hours rather than 4. This is a very easy business to run and great for newer players. The only real work involved once it's set up is just the selling missions. This has quickly become mine and many others go to business for making easy money with minimal effort. The import export from your vehicle warehouse has also seen a buff this year, with a top range vehicle adding an extra 50% high demand bonus on top of your $100,000. The cooldown on exported vehicles is 20 minutes, so you're looking at $150,000 in those 20 minutes each time. Make sure you only export these one at a time, as exporting more than that will only grant you the bonus for the one car you are delivering. The source emissions can be frustrating at times, but they are still a great way to make millions in between your other activities. The best way to run it is fill up your warehouse to 60% capacity with standard and mid-range vehicles. This means you'll now only ever get the request to source top range. Now you can just export it and then go and source another one to replace it, rinse and repeat. Before you can buy a vehicle warehouse, which starts at $1.5 million, you'll need to have purchased a CEO office, which starts at just $1 million. If you are on a new gen console, like a PS5 or an Xbox Series S or X, you will have access to the HSW upgrades on selected vehicles, which then grants you access to the HSW time trials. Each week, the location of the time trials will change, but there are currently only 8 available. The reason these are a great way to make money is because these pay out a minimum of $250,000 for completion, and some can be done in under a minute. These can only be completed once a week however, until the next weekly update. Easily the best vehicle to use for these is the Hakuchu Drag, as it's much slimmer than a car for dodging traffic, is very agile once you get used to maximising handbrake turns, and has a very high top speed and acceleration. Even without really trying or being a particularly good driver, the time trial should be completed without any real problems, as the part time you have to complete them is so generous. I do these every week without fail as it's easy money and also very fun. You also have the standard time trials, which pay out at least $100,000 each week. Again, much easier to complete on a new gen console using the Hakuchu Drag, but those of you on PC or previous consoles may find these more challenging, as you won't have access to the extra speed from the HSW upgrades, and the time restraints are much more strict. So those are the best ways to make money in GTA Online in 2023. If you think I missed anything, like the biker businesses, I didn't, it's because they suck. Drop a comment below to tell us your top 5 ways you make your cash. So if you found this video useful, please drop it a like and maybe consider subscribing for more. I'm Beatsdown and I'll see you in the next one.